Hello my DJ Beans. Today is a special day here on this channel. Oh boy. I never thought this would be possible, especially in such a short amount of time, but here we are. We have surpassed 15,000 subscribers, which is quite a huge goal. I never thought that after I made those changes, this channel would still be growing pretty fast. To think, I started back in June with only 100 subs, then 8 months later, we're here at 15k and still growing to this day. I honestly don't have anything else to say other than thank you, because this community has been nothing but very supportive of me no matter what. Even if you don't watch my videos, I still appreciate the support you guys have given me. With that being said, this is a special video that I have planned out for a while now, and one that might be more experimental compared to my previous videos. I'm going to be discussing the main plot and the characters for Dark Delirium, a custom storyline created by me in Project Arrhythmia that will consist of 7 levels, 5 of which are done currently. Since the storyline is rather short, I figured now is the best time as any to provide better context and lower the story. Keep in mind, this video will contain major spoilers to the storyline. If you haven't caught up with the previous levels of the storyline, or if you wish to not get spoiled now, now is the perfect time to click off of this video to avoid any potential spoilers for the future of the storyline. I'll leave a link in the description for a playlist. With that being said, let's discuss the origins of Dark Delirium. Before we begin discussion regarding the storyline, do keep in mind however that I am not by no means a professional storyteller, let alone can tell an engaging story like New Kin's Heartstring storyline. This storyline of mine was to mainly improve my writing abilities and create a better sense of where my story was heading. I didn't just create Dark Delirium for the sake of having to follow the storyline train of Project Arrhythmia, but rather to test out my storytelling and see where this was going. Because here's a fun little fact, after I finished my second level Enigma, I honestly had no plans of continuing that level or deciding on how I was going to continue off of that level. Because at the time, Enigma just became another standalone boss level of mine, similar to Corrosive in a way. That is, until I wanted to bring the concept of the main antagonist, Hysteria, to life, is I want to give both them and Delirium a purpose and give them more character. Also I had some help from my friend Mags, giving me some great ideas on how I should be able to continue off Enigma. So that day forward, I started planning on ideas and creating a potential song list for my 7 part storyline. I wanted the storyline to stay short due to the fact that I wanted to avoid adding a lot of characters and to have the story cluttered. I want to keep my story consistent while also being easy to follow through. It's not meant to be deep or well thought out or anything like that, just plain simple. That's what I wanted my story to stay at. If there are any inconsistencies with it however, then I do apologize. Again, don't think of me as a professional storyteller. I'm still learning the ropes of what it takes to get better. Anyways, you guys are here because you're curious of how the story began. It's not just about delirium being possessed, nor is it just about corruption. Like I said before, I had this planned out for months, and now today is the time where I share to you how this all started. Let's say this takes place around 10 years ago before the events of Enigma. It all started in a small town, far off behind a large mountain range, where it was home to beings known as Lightbringers. Its inhabitants were light mages that would help to protect and serve anybody in need, since Radiant Sorcery was their main specialty in both offense and defense. Anyone born in that town would be granted the opportunity to learn this special form of magic and slowly build up their town with the amount of people learning light magic. Of course, the oldest inhabitants would only rely on using their magic to, for good and to help others since they refuse to believe that abusing magic is beneficial to them. Magic would mainly be used in their normal lives, whether it be helping each other or doing civil everyday tasks. Everything seemed fine and peaceful for their town, until one day, one of the Lightbringers had a strange vision. They envisioned that a dark, mysterious force would soon come to their world and turn their world into their very own. So that Lightbringer left the town to clear their mind a little. While wandering around town, they saw a strange being that wasn't like their kind. That being was no other than the Nanobot, whose name in this story would be Nano. The Nanobot was on a journey of their own, as they explored inside of a cave that wasn't too far from the town. While searching around, they came across one of the Lightbringers that was working on a machine. A machine that would be able to transport anyone into any dimension. One that would become far bigger than their current world once it was powered with enough light essence. As the Lightbringer encountered the Nanobot, they believed that they would be the perfect test subject to try out since the Lightbringer needed to test this machine on somebody that would be willing enough to. While the Lightbringer was powering up the machine with enough light essence, 
The net bot approached closer to it, and after a huge burst of light lit up the entire cave, they were both gone, with the machine left broken. Not only was the machine able to transport them into an unknown dimension, but it also created a small rift that linked the two worlds together. Allowing anyone that would come near it to transport to that exact world. Turns out, that unknown realm that the nailbot got teleported to was no other than the Dark Dimension. A place riddled with dark, mysterious entities that didn't welcome any outsiders. The nailbot would soon be an unknown creature that would take their life. But before we can dwell on that, let us discuss probably one of the most important characters. One of the characters that's been around for a while. That character being Lumiere. Lumiere is a character that is planned for a while as soon as I continue to work on Monster. She is known to be an experienced light sorceress with a rather overprotective personality. It was said in the prophecies that a powerful light being with enough power would be capable of banishing any star of dark forces. However, her story is unlike any other. Lumiere was born as an only child. She was simply raised by her parents who were specialized in the arts of radiant sorcery that benefited over any dark forces. They lived in a rather large tower fortified enough to fend off any attacks and is shielded with a strong radiant force field created by her parents to protect their little girl. She was taught this special and unique form of magic at such a young age. It hopes to fend off any dark oppressing forces alongside her parents. As Lumiere grew older, she grew more confident and intelligent in her magical capabilities and started to study light magic independently after being taught the basis from her parents. Oftentimes, she would get into the more advanced aspects behind her parents' backs. Given that Lumiere cares so deeply for her parents and wishes to protect them if they ever get into any more trouble with the outside forces one day. Plus, Lumiere had felt her parents were too worried about the little girl hanging in the wrong direction and was using her powers for other intentions other than helping others. So one day, Lumiere comes across one of her mother's old manuals that briefly describe almost everything there is to know about light magic, even the advanced techniques. However, that book was spoken in a language she wasn't able to comprehend, but after some studying, she slowly got used to this form of language and began learning from it. From that moment on, Lumiere was now self-taught in the arts of radiant magic, which she's been teaching herself for several years. However, Lumiere woke up one day and felt that something wasn't right. She looked around the whole tower and wasn't able to find her parents. Lumiere felt pretty worried as she'd never been gone for this long before let alone leaving her all alone at still a young age. Feeling clueless, she decides to leave the tower in search of her parents. While searching around, she stumbles across something just below here. It was a hexagonal necklace that looked like the same necklace her mother used to wear. Lumiere held the necklace and stared directly at it. She felt a terrible presence loom over her as it displayed a blurred image of her parents being overwhelmed by the dark forces after they returned to their world. Teared up, Lumiere quickly fled back inside the tower as the sky began to darken. She had herself in the tower ever since that day, not letting any outsiders enter. Numir continued to master the arts of rain sorcery, so she would be able to bring back her parents and banish the dark forces for good. That is, until she decided to create a special being, one who was said to punish the darkness from one of the old manuals. But alas, that's a story for another character. Now let's discuss everyone's favorite light being, that being known as Delirium. Delirium is a pure light being created by his master, Lumiere. He was given a timid and shy personality, but was created to assist anyone to fend off any dark mysterious forces that would get in the way. So here's how he was originally created, and what led up to him getting possessed, causing the string of events to occur leading up to Enigma. Delirium originally started out as a soulless husk, a simple light ball with no life. Just like several of Lumiere's failed experiments, her goal was to create the perfect light being that would have the potential power to banish the dark forces into their dimension for good. Failure after failure, Lumiere slowly grew helpless. Worrying she was going to lose another one of her subjects and may never see her parents again. Given that recent experiment either didn't have enough light essence to keep persisting and eventually fade away to nothingness, or that they weren't given a purpose to serve, until she was able to gather the light essence through her necklace to transfer that magic onto the next light husk. After the room lit up greatly with light, Lumiere saw this being come to life as it was giving claws for hands and a rather bored expression on his face. He was terrified and glanced around the room in fear, wondering why he was here 
or where he came from, until he was slowly calmed down by Lumiere, his true creator. He was told from her that his purpose was to protect Lumiere and banish the evil that was the darkness. He was still a little confused at what she was trying to convey to him, given that he was just created and his mind hadn't fully developed enough yet to understand everything. Luckily, unlike her other test subjects, Lumiere had a motherly connection with him and was very patient with him, reminding Lumiere of herself when she was really young, curious and determined to do good for this world. From that day forward, Delirium began to slowly grow and train as Lumiere's mentor and learn from under her wing. He was taught to light matching how to properly defend himself for when the time comes. The two began to bond as if they had a mother-son relationship. Lumiere grew more patient with him since he was learning rather slowly but got stronger over time. She felt really proud of this creation and wanted to keep him safe, even if it meant protecting him at all cost. Then one day, while Lumiere looked out the window as the sky grew darker, she knew that their world would soon be doomed if she doesn't contribute soon. But the other option that held on to her was that she would try to banish the Dark Forces herself, since she is getting real close to mastering the arts of radiant sorcery. But ever since that tragic day, her fears still held on to her and didn't want to explain this to Delirium considering she doesn't want him to lose faith. So, after some quick thinking, she made a decision while Delirium went up to her checking if she was alright. Lumiere looked down at him with a hint of trust in her eyes, telling him that he was ready to defend against the dark forces. He was feeling a little nervous and felt as if he wasn't prepared enough for this, but of course, Lumiere's been training him for a year now and has her full trust that he will make her proud. After some thinking, Delirium goes by with this decision as it was his purpose. He is grand with good luck as he gets transported by Lumiere to where the dark forces would be. But of course, Delirium wasn't able to properly defend himself in time as he quickly got possessed and his body was slowly taken over. Given he was given a weak mind, causing him to easily give in to the corruption. Mainly the sinister being that goes by the name Hysteria. Now before we get into Hysteria, there is another character that I forgot to mention that also has no actual importance in the storyline, but is also rather prominent in the storyline. That character being Oddball. Not much can be said about Oddball to be honest, considering that Oddball isn't technically my character. He belongs to Mags, which is my friend and partner. Back when I was playing on how I continue after the events of Enigma, Mags sent me a couple of pictures and screenshots of this character with what appeared to be a bump on his head while being in a possessed state. And he told me his theme would be the Saw Monster by Temanite, Sogonar, and Shime. So, after some consideration, I figured this would be a great following point to the storyline, giving me a clear view of where this was heading. So all the credit for Oddball is given to Mags since it's his original character. Just something I wanted to get out of the way, now let's focus on Oddball himself. He's portrayed as an ally character and assists the player in protecting them. He is known for having soft but sturdy skin. Think of it as like rubber against wood, soft but with the hard support. The bump on his head however lacks the softness but is much stronger than the protected solid skin everywhere else in his body. Also if Oddball ever felt the need to protect himself, he would only use his large hands since on his own he's good with close combat. It's said with enough power, Oddball is able to break boulders that are around his side since he's pretty strong. Not enough to fight against Hysteria however since he still had a weak mind. During the events of Monster, after Oddball got possessed the first time, as the player suggested that they find safety, Oddball wanted to take them both back to his home village for safety. However, as Hysteria still had slight control over Oddball, they were able to make him lost on purpose, only leading them both into the forest where nobody else is around, so they would be able to finish off the player. But luckily, after a rough battle and gaining more control over Oddball, he was able to push Hysteria out of his mind, only to leave him with a rather unusual side effect. During the events of Careless, Oddball grew more scared and easily frightened after being possessed by Hysteria, as he was inflicted with a negative effect, causing him to feel more worried about being possessed again and hurting the player. Considering he's already taken a liking to the player, it doesn't wish to hurt him again. So that's why he ran off inside of the cave by himself, trying to protect himself from everyone to avoid causing further harm. The effect didn't last long however, as Abba felt a little less insecure about getting his body taken over since they believed that Hysteria would be able to find another host that didn't have a weak mind like his. Little did Oddball know however, this was the exact same cave where it all started, so it wouldn't be no surprise that Hysteria was still lurking nearby. You know, as someone once said, there's two sides to every story. Now you've gotten a feel for how the Lightbringers are. 
Let's see what the Darkbringers are all about, including Hysteria. They're known to be an evil sadistic demon that's been sealed away in the Dark Realm for thousands of years. Not even the Lightbringers were aware of their existence, since that's where Hysteria and the other Dark Beings reside as they're very weak and don't have any physical appearances like them. They were only able to grow and slowly build a power by possessing a host for a good amount of time. Every year, the Heart of Darkness, the core of the dimension that holds the dimension stable, would begin to pump out a new dark entity, each given its own life. They start off pretty weak at first, but slowly continue to grow as the Heart of Darkness continues to feed dark matter to them slowly. Hysteria just so happens to be the weakest of the group. However, unlike the others, Hysteria is more of an adept mind and was able to think more clearly, so much so that they were able to foresee another world beyond theirs. Their main purpose was to hopefully take over that world so they can create a new. As Hysteria told the others about their plan, they couldn't possibly fathom what they were trying to say since they don't have a cerebral mind like theirs. So of course, feeling left out, Hysteria fled from the others and decided to create a link from their realm to the other realm by themselves. As Hysteria traveled not too far, still emotionally hurt by the others, still believed that their plan would work, since they were now able to search for a reliable host, enough for them to grow more powerful and be able to possess the strongest of minds. Also to turn this world into their very own, but of course, Hysteria being in the weakened state they're in now, had to start off by locating the weaker host in order to get stronger. As Hysteria wandered around aimlessly, they were able to find a pure light being with the weakened state of mind. So Hysteria took this opportunity to battle with the being. Luckily the battle didn't last long as they were able to easily corrupt their mind and take over their body. Now being able to have almost full control over their powers, now given the chance to destroy any physical beings that would stand in their way and not attempt to destroy them. That is, until they run into a special kind of life form as their first target, that target being the nanobots. Of course, the Stary wasn't able to get their hands on the nanobot for long as Nano manages to escape the dark realm through the dimensional rift, taking them back into the light world. But this, however, didn't stop Hysteria from following the player, as their strongest desire was to remove the player from this world to prevent ruining their plans, even if it meant taking over any minds necessary in order to fulfill their plans. Now the rift is slowly beginning to grow, causing more of these dark entities to escape into the other world. The Lightbringers grew more worried and were unable to further protect themselves as these dark beings grew more powerful. Not even the rift can be contained as it was quite impossible at this point. There was one option, however, in order to eradicate these dark beings for good and to strip them of their dark essence. That would require a dangerous mission into the dark realm and locate no other than, you guessed it, the Heart of Darkness. And yeah guys, that's basically most of, if not all of the information I can provide for the background lore and for the characters in the Dark Delirium storyline. But before I end it off here, here are a couple of things I forgot to mention in this video. During the events of Hold On, where Delirium steps out of his comfort zone to battle against Hysteria and push them out of his mind, it appeared that he also lost his life in the progress. Which, <laughs> really isn't the case. If you've been paying attention to this video, you'll know that Lumiere foresaw this happening so she sent him back into the tower in order to rest up, causing Lumiere to have mixed feelings towards Nano, i.e. the player. Since Lumiere is overprotective of her subjects, and let that get to her as she attempted to battle the player. Another thing, as Hysteria continued to corrupt more physical beings, they are able to get a new ability which is to create a substitute of the original body which is what happened during Lumiere's battle with Hysteria and Aether. Hysteria, like always, was able to replicate her powers and use them to their full advantage, but Lumiere had the upper hand as she put her fears behind and was able to weaken Hysteria and transport them back into the dark depths. Now the bigger question is, how will this all end? Well, as much as I like to tell you guys how it is all ties together, I'd rather not. Just for the sake of not spoiling the entire story, you'll just have to wait until I finish up the last two levels of Dark Delirium to find out. But trust me guys, it'll all be worth it once it ends. But yeah guys, I really hope you enjoyed this informative video on my storyline thus far. I know it was long overdue, but it's finally here. Hopefully this answers some of your guys' questions. If you're still curious, however, on some aspects I might have missed or didn't explain clearly enough, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I'll answer them as best as I can. Again, thank you all for your incredible support on this series and this channel as a whole. I don't know where I would be without you guys. I'll be sure to still be around giving you more content like this in the future. 
Maybe some cutscene levels to better tie the story together? But yeah, we'll see. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you're new to this channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button or like this video if you enjoyed. That's all I have to say, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.